All right, today on the Tea Podcast, it's going to be a fun episode. I have a local Louisiana TikToker named Tori Lemoyne. Uh, if you're on TikTok at all, and if you live in Louisiana, especially Lafayette, you probably have seen her content. Uh, I'm pretty sure you have, and if you don't know the name, you've seen her face, I'm sure. But uh, we're going to be talking with her about, uh, of course, social media, TikTok, and Louisiana, especially Lafayette, and I think she's not... You don't live technically in Lafayette, but we'll get to that. Uh, but yeah, sit back and enjoy the show. All righty. So real quick, before we get the conversation started, our presenting sponsor is Chase Group Construction. They take the lead and become your one point of contact for the entire design build process and design build. If you don't have from or if you're not familiar with it, they can design the business for you, the building and also build it. So it's kind of like a one stop shop. I hate using that term, but it is what it is. Uh, they have a portfolio, pretty diverse of projects uh, that range from medical centers to popular restaurants like Fat Pats and Broussard and then uh, Bro Bridge. They've built those they built a lot of places but that's just the main two that i tell people about because most people know what fat pats is um they've also built multi-unit shopping centers but they built a lot of crap so uh chasegroupconstruction.com check them out and uh yeah they're they're a supporter of ours and you should support them too all right so tori lamoin it's great it's it's great to have you on how's it going good thanks for having me i'm excited so <laughs> go ahead and tell me a little bit about you uh are you with a name like Lemoyne, I'm assuming you're originally from this area, but are you from the Lafayette area as it is? I am. So my last name, I'm actually married, so it's my married name, um, but I am from Lafayette. I technically was born in Marksville, but we moved here when I was a toddler with my mom. So um, yeah, I've been living in Lafayette for 34 years, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we live right outside of Lafayette now, kind of in the country, but yeah, I call Lafayette home, so... Yeah, I mean, most of your content is laugh in Lafayette. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so Marksville. I mean, that's Avoyles Parish. Technically, you were born in Cajun Country, mm -hmm. essentially, because yeah. I mean, I think Acadiana it technically goes all the way up to Avoyles Parish, which is crazy. It's that far up, almost Rapides Parish, which is Alexandria, which is not Cajun no, at all. Not at all. I wouldn't even consider Central Cajun. <laughs> <laughs> we're getting, we're right, being honest. Right. No, it's crazy. Um, uh, it's weird to even think Lake Charles is remotely Cajun, even though they're a part of Acadiana. Um, and I think Acadiana also ex extends all the way to, is it St. Charles Parish, like almost New Orleans? I'm like, yeah, no. Yeah, that's a whole different, yeah, whole yeah, different totally country different. there. <laughs> but yeah, tell me a little bit more about you. Like, how did you, um, how did you get started in social media, specifically TikTok? Um, I know you in your bio, you said you had a, a you've always had a knack for creating videos, yeah. but like, what got you started? So I always did create videos, like even before, really before Facebook, um, we had those little flip cameras. I don't know if you remember <laughs> those, and yep. we would film on those, and I would like edit the videos on my Mac and just kind of like share them with family and friends and stuff. Um, and then I got on like obviously Facebook and Instagram. I was like not interested in TikTok whatsoever. My husband was on it. And Wait, your husband was on TikTok before you? He was on TikTok you. before me, wow. yes. And he would show me these videos, and I was like such a Instagram girl, you know? I'm like, yeah. that is so stupid. Like, why? <laughs> I don't want to get on that. And he would say, no, like, you need to get on it. It's like funny videos and stuff. So I, I finally got on, and um, and then I just naturally start posting videos. That's just like what I like to do. Yeah. And uh, people liked what I was posting, and I got follower after follower, and I was like, okay, maybe I should just continue doing this. Uh, people obviously like to see what I share. So. Yeah. So um, it's funny that you say that your husband had it before you, because I had TikTok before my wife. Really. Now, she does not create content whatsoever, but it took a while for her to um, kind of find TikTok appetizing enough to download. Like, yeah. I would send her the TikTok links in a text message, and she'd, she'd be like, I have to download TikTok to watch yeah. this. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I guess you don't, but, like, it, it kind of makes you, it kind of forces mm -hmm. you to. And so she would, and she would find some of the videos that I would send her funny, uh, some of them not so funny. But um, 
Uh, yeah, it took her a, a few weeks um, to download it. And then once she did, of course, she started sending me TikTok videos. Yeah, yeah. And some of them I find funny, yeah. not all of them. <laughs> and it's just, it's really weird how, you know, how people gravitate towards uh, social media and TikTok, especially since TikTok is, I don't know why, but it, it, it's such a controversial topic it is yeah why do you why do you think tiktok so controversial like the the tiktok ban and everything else i really don't understand it i mean i guess um i think there's so much freedom on tiktok to express your opinion um whether that's good or bad so i think like our <laughs> yeah, country is probably yeah. like maybe we need to <laughs> control that a little bit but yeah because um i mean there are some people that have some things that they say on there that are just nutty very very nutty and i'm yeah. like who gave this person the confidence right to say this but right. you know and my i don't know about you and i think i think this is pretty pretty easy to say for everybody but the comment section is the best part oh gosh yes it's always I go the best straight part. to the comments <laughs> just to get a good laugh yeah sometimes they're more funny than the videos yeah so so, so going back to the early days before social media um, you are, you said you're what, 34, 35, rough, 35. Yep. Okay. So you told me before we went on live that you don't really get on Facebook that much. No, <laughs> I'm 38. So we're not that far off. I mean, you're considered a millennial Yeah. and Facebook and Instagram are millennial territory. Facebook yeah. kind of teeter totters on the genera generation X boomer territory, yep. mm -hmm. but I remember when MySpace was around. I don't know if you were on MySpace. Were you hard coding your backgrounds and all that? Yep, I was yep. doing all the things. Yeah, <laughs> love it. I kind of wish MySpace would come back. I know. I wish I could pull up my old MySpace. Oh God, <laughs> R.I.P. But I remember, 2007, 2008, MySpace was all the all the talk. Everybody was on it. Uh, grandma's not so much, but mm -hmm. you know, most of your young people are on it because you know, grandma didn't know how to code, so right. she wasn't on it. Um, <laughs> But then around 2008 to 2009 ish, somewhere in that range, Facebook was blowing up and all of a sudden MySpace started changing and it started looking different. I'm like, what, what are they doing? What is this thing that I got to give a status right. for? Like every day they want mm -hmm. me, they want me to tell them what I'm doing. Yeah. Like, why? Yeah. Well, then some friends of mine that were on Facebook that had kind of already started migrating were like, oh, they're changing it to be more like Facebook. I'm like. Facebook like what is that <laughs> so sure enough I'm like I, being being curious I go there and I'm like it looks like the lamest social media network ever there's no place to put a code like I want I can't change my background I can't put music on right. it like how come I can't put music I want to I, I want to let everybody know yeah. what my favorite song yeah, is for that yeah, week right. I couldn't do it <laughs> I said this is this is kind of stupid so I went back to my space and then I noticed over a course of a couple months, people started leaving MySpace. And some people announced it, some mm -hmm. people ghost it. And I'm like, dude, there's hardly nothing left on MySpace. So I'm like, I'm posting some like pictures and like nobody's right. reacting. I'm like, this is sad. Yeah, I know. So then I hop over to Facebook and I'm like, God, if this is where everybody's at, yeah. I guess I need to acclimate. And, mm -hmm. and it took me a while because I was like, it just it's so bland. It was white. The, the profile picture was stupid. I was like, I, I know. I, it was so weird. And then Facebook changed a little bit. They got a little bit more adaptive to what people wanted, but you still couldn't change your background, all that good stuff. And then um, I guess where I'm going with this is, did you make this make the switch from MySpace to Facebook? I did, okay. yes. Yeah. For how, was, for how long were you on Facebook for? Oh, gosh. I don't know. When did it even – I was in high school, and I had MySpace. And like you said, about 2009, I would say. I got on Facebook. It was actually my aunt. She was like, you got to try this new <laughs> website or whatever, this new platform. And I, I was like you. I was like, it's so stupid. I can't put a song or anything. Like, how do I express my personality on this page? Um, but, yeah, finally I just got on. And I think all it was is you could just post updates, like, or, like your thoughts. And yeah, I was like, yeah. okay. Like, it was, yeah. So that was about the time that I switched over. And I honestly don't know what I did with my MySpace. Like, I guess I just ghosted it like those people. <laughs> And then now I wish, like, I guess maybe I deleted it, too, because I could did. not go back to it. And I want those pictures so bad. But, um, yeah, so that was my evolution from God. 
What's yeah. crazy is I still remember my password to MySpace. It was so easy, <laughs> probably probably too easy. And I still go back and hoping that I can log in and get the the photos on it because I know there was a time where like they would they announce like hey you know if you don't log in now like everything's going to be erased. So I think that's done and gone and it turned into. I don't know if it's still like a music website or whatever it is. I have no it's, idea. It's is weird. it even on still? I, <laughs> it might, know. I don't know. It might be. I <laughs> haven't. I honestly, I haven't gone look. I know there's like dupes where people have recreated what MySpace was, and oh, they were okay. trying to like bring it back. Yeah. Um, I no. think I think it's it's a time it's pass. Gone. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So you you know social media is evolving. You're creating videos. Were you creating? Uh, content on Facebook, Louisiana based, were you actively doing that before TikTok? No. So I was just kind of doing things like for fun. Like I was just like moody type, um, emotional type videos, kind of like music video type things. Wait, music yeah, video. I'll, I'll have to pull up one of them and send it to you. Um, it's just, I don't know. I just like the video process and editing yeah, and, yeah. you know, an emotional video creating something like that. So I was doing that and I don't even know where I was posting it. Like, I guess maybe on Facebook, but I would just kind of play around with it. I really, I had no purpose really for it other than just to send it to my family and friends. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, yeah so, so I like doing that. So I guess now my question is, is what do you do? Like, what is your full-time job? Like, what do you do? Okay. So <laughs> with TikTok and I was... Um, a vet tech, like f several years okay. ago, okay, I was in veterinary medicine. Then I decided to like stay home. Um, my husband works away a lot. So I needed to like basically work from home or just do something from home. So I was grooming dogs kind of a, as a little side grooming hustle dogs, thing okay. yeah, in my backyard. We built a shop and everything. So, um, but then I started doing the TikTok thing, posting about, you know, small businesses and food and all these things. And I was like, man, I just really love like social media and, and all of that. So I think I want to do like social media management where I can like post for businesses and kind of keep up their social media. So I switched to that, um, January of last year and I've been doing that ever since. Um, oh and I got gosh. my LLC. So like now I'm official. That's my real job now is a social media manager. Really? So, yeah. So how many clients do you have? I only have two right now. Okay. Cause I'm, I was kind of in the transition of, I started with a marketing company. Um, and I was kind of working under her and learning a lot. Um, and I did like real estate agents. I did a book author. Um, <clears throat> what else did I do? Um, I had a few different clients that I was kind of managing. Who's the book author? Her. Oh, I don't know if I want to say it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Cause I'm not working with that girl anymore. Oh, okay, so okay, I don't okay. know if I yeah, want to say fine, it. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. But, um, she was a children's book author. Okay. I think so, I know where you're going. Okay. Yeah. So, but then I kind of transitioned into just doing it on my own, um, and not working under her. And so, yeah, now I, I have just two, but it's a lot. It's, it's a lot of work. It really is. Like I could probably only take on maybe two more max, um, with everything else that I'm doing. Yeah. Too. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, what's crazy is uh, a couple of years ago, I thought, you know, I mean, I feel like I'm pretty good at social media, spe especially Facebook and Instagram. I think uh, this is kind of before TikTok became more of a like a must have and more just kind of a fun thing. And I was like, hmm, maybe I can try my hand at social media management. Yeah. Uh, I took on one client um, and then realized pretty quickly that I I was getting into some some deep water that, <laughs> not trouble, but like, I was getting over my head. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, so am I going to have to start posting all of the national this and that holidays and like make, you know, graphics for every single thing and then, of course, St. Patrick's Day mm -hmm. and keep, you know, every month there's something and like yep. almost every week, almost every day, there's something that might be relevant to that business. I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't know. If I have the mental bandwidth doing what I'm doing also with developing Lafayette and then yeah. everything else to, to manage that. It is. It's difficult. I mean, you're, you're having to be the voice of that particular business and see their social media through their eyes. 
And then totally, you know, for a different business, it's a whole different voice, different vibe, everything. And you kind of have to be an expert in whatever field you're managing for, you know? So like if I'm doing, let's say a dentist, I kind of have to learn a little bit about dentistry so that you post like accurate information on their page, you know? (laughs) Yeah. So um, it is hard. And it's kind of a difficult field because I think a lot of businesses think, well, I can just do that myself, you know, instead of paying someone. But it's so time consuming, which is why we're kind of expensive, too. So it's like a battle, you know. Yeah. But. OK. So. Uh, OK, so somebody just made a comment. I'll pull it up real quick. Cause no, it's, it's good. It's good. <laughs> so Kim Turnley mm. says Tori is my social media manager and she is great. <laughs> <laughs> that's good that's good to hear uh and then uh one of my followers says and he does this on every single video that we do pretty much uh, whatever the topic is he puts uh it's that topic time and so he put it's tiktok in time thank you brian martin thank you for that yeah. uh i believe he if i'm not mistaken works at a or owns or works at a uh marketing company oh cool uh teamwork maybe in down <coughs> near downtown or the oil center i don't know brian okay. if i get that wrong i'm sorry <laughs> but i i don't try to stalk everybody too hard but um so okay you're you're doing social media management and you're doing tiktok does i guess now obvious the obvious question is do you make money from tiktok i do you yes do. in okay. several ways and we can definitely get into that well i'm very I know, open about that i know one way uh so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So having known Tori for, I think I've been following you for maybe about a year-ish, give or take. Uh, I was following you from my personal account first that I don't really tell a whole lot of people about. And then I created the Developing Lafayette account, and then I started following you there because uh, it just made sense because you're relevant in this area. I said it just makes sense. So uh, and then I started commenting, and then I guess you know how the For You page works. Um, you you start watching somebody's content, even if you don't even heart it or react or whatever, um, it'll start showing you that person's content mm-hmm. more, getting you to, to either try to follow that, that, that creator or they believe that you're finding this particular topic interesting, even though that, that creator may not create that topic all the time, but they'll still show you multiple videos. Mm-hmm. So I landed on a video of yours and it was a food video. <laughs> and I talked about this on one of my other episodes, and you definitely made a TikTok stitch about it. Um, and I think it was stitch. It was uh, overlay. Yeah. And uh, it was it was a McDonald's video. And you were sitting in your car like most uh, TikTok food reviewers do, which is the, the setting. And you were eating a, I guess it was a Big Mac. It I was. think it was. Yep. And you were talking about the food, and you were talking about McDonald's, and... You used this uh, language that felt very, very paid. It felt (laughs) felt very paid. And I was like, okay, I don't know for a fact, but this sounds like a paid ad. And I'm not, I'm not angry at it, but like, like, so just thinking Louisiana food and just, you know, someone who's repping Louisiana, especially mm-hmm. Lafayette area with food, it, it felt odd at first to mm-hmm. for you to be talking about McDonald's because I'm like, most people don't food review McDonald's hardly at all unless they're like big city food reviewers and like then they, they do a lot. But like Louisiana is very specific to most of the time small mom and pops. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, yeah, I why is she doing I, this? I think it's paid. I think it's paid. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. then you said this word, and you corrected me. I thought it was uh, fluffy. It was even more production-y. <laughs> it was pillowy, a pillowy bun. And I'm like, yeah. wow. Mm-hmm. No one says that, at least not in normal. Like, they, they may use the word soft. Like, oh, man, this bun's, like, nice and soft yeah. and buttery. Uh, even that's kind of pushing it. Um, but, yeah, I was like, man, she got, she definitely got paid for this. And yeah. like, you gave like all the bullet points. I could tell like you had some stuff that you were driving home. Yep. I'm like, you know what? Good for her. I wonder <laughs> how much she got paid for that. That's, that's amazing. Cause McDonald's has never once paid for anything <laughs> for, with us. So I'm like, McDonald's, yeah. what is up? Yeah. Make laugh. Like where yeah. you at? And I don't even know if it was the local franchise McLaugh that paid or if it was corporate that paid. It was just McDonald's. 
Like yeah, the, like the, legit the, McDonald's. Okay, yeah. wow. And yeah, I mean, I don't always just do Louisiana stuff. Like I do travel and I share the stuff that I eat everywhere. But um, it's one of those things where they reached out to me and I was like, okay, do I actually eat this? Like, do I actually, you know, I won't promote anything that I don't actually eat. Right, right, or right. if I haven't eaten it, would I try it and give an honest review? And the answer was yes. You know, I mean, obviously we all eat McDonald's. Who wouldn't want to be paid to right. eat McDonald's, right? right. So, and they do, they give you bullet points and, um, just talking points. Um, I almost brought the brief with me just to show you, oh, that but cool, yeah, yeah. Uh, my house is all packed up and everything. So I couldn't find it, but, um, their, their thing, their brief said that they were introducing a new bun. So it wasn't like I was actually trying it and that was my opinion of it. Yeah. That was them telling me we're introducing a new formula, a new bun, and this is what it's going to be like. So this is what we're trying to push out to tell people about. Um, so I'm like, cool. Like, I trust McDonald's, you know, like, okay, if they're saying this, then let's just go yeah. with it. Um, is it actually better or different or pillowy? I don't think so. But, you know, you don't know that in the moment when you're – doing it you know so yeah. um but yeah they paid me to do that five hundred dollars which was not enough actually now that i've learned i'm continuously mm -hmm. learning mm -hmm. um and i kind of threw a, like a big number out there and they were just like yep sign so i was like shoot maybe i didn't say enough Look, that, <laughs> that sounds too easy for them to accept it that quick yeah so Whenever you made your TikTok video in response to me talking about the the fluffy bun uh, situation, um, you mentioned five hundred. I'm like, she, she got she could have got way more, way like, more, way more. And so I was thinking, like, realistically, I thought you got paid like three grand for that. No, so that's a fun thing about <laughs> like sponsorships on TikTok. There's really no like guideline there right isn't, there, there isn't. isn't and i social have media searched, in general yeah right i have searched high and low for like a true number and i just found like this one article that said charge one percent of your following i don't think that's accurate mm -mm. but that's all i could go with so um so that would have been what it, like now is what be 88 88 Eight hundred eighty-eight dollars, yeah. yeah, something like so, that. So, but even since then, like Zaps reached out to me, and I did a Zaps one, and I just put eight fifty, and they again, they never countered me. So I'm like, am I just now? Okay, now I'm getting like like plugged into these emails, these group emails that uh -huh. people brands are sending out, and the influencers are responding. I don't know if it's accidentally to everyone, so I'm getting their response and what and they're charging. They're what? And I'm nosy, so I go like look at their their page and see how many followers they have they have a lot less than me and they're charging a lot more than me so i'm like okay i'm obviously way underpaid yeah, for the sponsor yeah. post but you know you just don't know so well the whole saying you live and you learn yes you know, yeah i'm constantly learning um so we got a couple more comments um a chris lemoyne i don't know if you know chris lemoyne <laughs> that's my husband oh uh, chris says she gets she gets royalties from mcdonald's laughing face <laughs> Uh, and then we got the Cajun Critic, who uh, I had on. That's the episode yes, that Caleb. you watched. Yep, yeah, Caleb. He says, hey, and then he laughed emoji. And then um, he also says, just want to say, since my interview, Tori and I have become friends. Much love to her and Ben. Yeah, I can't wait to meet up with him. We're going to go try some restaurants. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, he's a, he's a really good guy, man. Um, I think with you and him collaborating, I think uh, that'll help him kind of get a get a better understanding of like the video process and stuff because yeah. he does create great content, but he, Caleb, your editing style does need work. <laughs> uh, so I think Tori can help you with that. Um, so back to getting paid to do videos. So we developing Lafayette, that's how we make a lot of our revenue. So uh, Facebook pays us. TikTok does not pay us because I don't have enough followers, uh, but uh, we get paid through sponsors, uh, like the podcast has sponsors. We also get paid through um, just doing one-off content, like like the McDonald's video that you made. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the times when you see a post from us, uh, usually on Facebook or Instagram, that says a business is now open, or if it's a video showing that business being open, um, similar to like Jet Coffee, whenever I did that, that got like over 50-something thousand views on Facebook, which is pretty good for Facebook. Uh, we did not get paid to do jet, but they are talking with us to do like long-term sponsors. So nice. I did that in preparation for that. But like a lot of the other videos that I've done 
have been paid. And we charge, we used to charge back in 2019, it was $250. I said, it's super quick. I would go live. Like I wasn't even editing. I would just go live, walk through the business, talk about it, be done in like 10 minutes, get a check and deposit it. And yeah. it was like, that's it. But that's super cheap advertisement for it's them at super the same cheap, time. But it's also local businesses, yeah. which a lot of local businesses, especially restaurants, barely have a budget. Mm-hmm. Like, and I don't, yeah. I don't want to like be too demanding on the the price for small businesses because I, they need help. Yes. But I'm also a small business too. Yeah, so exactly. it's like, I know. hey, it's... what about that local support, right? Yeah. So we found a middle ground. Uh, we worked our way up from 250 to 500. Nice. And then we were hoping at 500 for like a couple of years. And now we're at 750. Nice. 750 for an opening post and or a video where I just literally take a couple of shots uh, I might add a voiceover. I might not. Yeah. And I don't even do it live anymore. I just do it real quick, drop it into CapCut or TikTok, add the clips in, boom, add some music. It's done. Yeah, that's awesome. And yeah, I mean, and it's great. And then the businesses, they get a lot of exposure, especially because in the local area, as far as like foodies go, uh, t- uh, fi- uh, la- 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 I'm mixing my words, Facebook. <laughs> Still has a pretty good reach here mm-hmm. in the in the Louisiana yeah. area, and so a lot of the businesses will let us know like a couple of weeks after, like, "Hey, that post really helped us out. Like, we were so busy for like the first week, yeah. and then of course it kind of you know died down after that. Just how social media works. Mm-hmm. But um, like with you, how long have you been getting paid from TikTok and the various ways that you do? So I started um, in June. My friend Bayou Brandy, she's also on TikTok. She has switched over to the beta program, which is the program where they pay you for views on yeah. TikTok. And she was just hounding me for it. She's like, you've got, I had just had a, a video go viral. And she's like, you could have made so much money on that mm-hmm. video. Um, and she was like, you know, I was afraid though, because I said, you know, it's going to suppress my views. I'm afraid it suppresses my views. And my whole point is not to make money. It's really to get my videos out there. And she said, no, I swear it's not, you know, just trust me. And I don't know why, what she had, you know, but, um, I trusted her and I switched over in, I think it was June. So I got my first pay in July and it's been like, since July, I've made $15,000 just on views, just on views. That's no sponsored So within almost a year? Well, it'd be, well, it'll be a year in July, yeah. Yeah, exactly, wow. yeah. So, and it is kind of all over the place. Like, some months I'll have, like, a $5,000 check, you know, or wow. whatever, you know. And then the next, it might be, like, $150. But it's kind of like, um, it's not something I'm going to, you know, quit my job for, but it's... Some it's, people have. Some people have. And, you know, the people with a million followers or, you know, even a half a million yeah. followers, they can probably make a decent living off of it. Um, it's just too inconsistent for me and I'm not quite there yet, but, um, yeah, it's a nice little extra income. Yeah, so. for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So we have another <clears throat> comment. Let's see if, uh, let me, let me screen it first. <laughs> okay. I, I'm going to read it. Okay. I don't think there's anything I bad in it. I just hope it makes sense. So Larry greatness uh, so, okay. I don't know who Larry Greatness is. Uh, he, uh, the comment may not make sense, but here okay. we go. As a millionaire who's living his best life. Okay. okay. Uh, I was also suffering at a time and, um, you know what? I'm just going to let you guys read the comment. It, it's not bad. It's just, I don't, I don't think it, it's super relevant to the conversation. Okay. All right. <laughs> so, uh, I, I thought it would be different. Larry. Thank you for commenting. Um, (laughs) So let me get my, I do have to get a sponsor in. So now that I I found a stopping point, um, we are at 28 minutes in. So real quick, um, the Music Academy of Acadiana, Acadiana's top choice for music lessons. So if you're looking to put your child in music school, or if you're looking to put yourself in music school school, because you suck at music, uh, they can help you improve. They are locally founded by Tim Benson, who is a UL Lafayette Music School graduate. He's also in a emo, screamo, early 2000s rock cover band called The Criers. 
I, I say that every time because it's so cool, and they sound just like all the bands that you would listen to from the early 2000s. Um, so basically, they teach students of all ages and styles, uh, drums, violin, saxophone, flute, audio production. They can even help you improve your voice. Um, they have tons of instructors, a lot of students uh, throughout their uh, facility each month, over 500 plus. I'm pretty sure that was a couple years ago whenever they had 500. They probably have a thousand now who knows but a uh, really great school their goal is to make music lessons fun educational and to help foster the next generation of musicians and creative thinkers you can check them out at their website music academy acadiana.com or you can go to their instagram facebook and i think they have uh, tiktok i don't know tim it, you're the you you do social media marketing for your your own company i think so if, uh if you don't have tiktok you should have it okay so going back to the conversation, I was looking at some of your stuff. You mentioned that you were an am animal lover, mm -hmm. and you also mentioned that you did grooming at your house. Uh, do you still do the grooming at your house? I or don't. You don't? No, okay. no, I hung that up right whenever I decided to switch careers completely. Yeah, so okay. it was fun while it lasted, but it is a dirty job. Oh, I bet, I bet, yeah, dogs <laughs> yeah, in general. it's hard, it's hard. Um, and so you're married, of course, your husband was commenting. Um, so what, so what is your take on the, this area's food in general? Do you believe that we have the best food in the United States? One million percent. Okay, there you One go. One million percent. No hesitation. <laughs> um, but outside of this area, where have you had good food that you would say competes? Oh, gosh. Dare I say New Orleans? New Orleans is like a second home to me, okay? And it's a whole different vibe of food. But it's like when I go to New Orleans, I have to have all of my favorite New Orleans foods. I would say... I would say that would be my second place, like, okay. honestly. Yeah, yeah. I know it's, like, kind of controversial. If you're from Louisiana, like, people kind of roll their eyes at New Orleans. Yeah, because apparently people outside of the Louisiana area think that New Orleans is Louisiana. Yeah, it's not, but it <laughs> definitely has great food, great food. Yeah. Just a whole different type okay. of food. Yeah. I would I would say that if, if somebody were to ask me about New Orleans food versus Lafayette, I would tell them, like, if you want the freshest seafood, mm -hmm. go to New Orleans. If you want good home cooked like gravy and stews and gumbos, you're coming to Lafayette for sure. And yeah. crawfish, of course. Yeah, because uh, we have all the crawfish ponds around us, um, and you live out in the country area, so I'm pretty sure you have crawfish ponds around you too. Oh yeah, everywhere. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, so I, I failed to mention that when we were talking about the McDonald's <laughs> video, uh, Tori showed up with this. A, a Big Mac for me. I know you love them so much. I do. I actually do love a Big Mac. <laughs> so I, that's probably why the video was served to me so diligently through TikTok. Because um, I like a Big Mac. Uh, it's a treat. I don't always get them. But whenever I do, I'm like, I enjoy it because I love the Big Mac sauce. Yeah. Um, the To the pillowy bun part. <laughs> um, you're right. It's, it's not always... Um, consistent because it is fast food um you know depending on the the staff and all that good stuff mm -hmm. uh i've had times when mcdonald's buns were truly pillowy <laughs> <laughs> but not all the time sometimes the it's hard and it almost feels like the the i, I don't know the the crust or whatever the the brown part of the bread is yeah. not the the pillowy inside. The crust is dry and it almost looks like the desert floor of a <laughs> like a dried up lake. It's just, <laughs> I'm like, why do they give me this crusty looking bun? <laughs> like, oh yeah. And I, I it's like I want to bring it back, but I know good and well that you take what you get. Oh yeah, at McDonald's. You don't you don't ask for anything. You don't specific. bring it back. No. <laughs> and if you do bring it back, you you. If you can watch them remake it, watch them remake it. I'm yeah. not saying anything bad about the staff, but <laughs> there are bad eggs. And uh, TikTok even has shown that some fast food workers are just ruthless. I don't know if you've seen them, but people have live streamed themselves making people's food and have done stuff. And I'm like, mm, oh, God. That's scary. It is so scary. <laughs> My wife says all the time. When we go out to eat, we're literally stepping into a battlefield. Yeah. We don't know what we're 
ex- we don't know what we're getting from the back. Nope. We're just trusting that they're making it good and it's going to be, it's, it's just going to be good and it's not going to hurt us at all. Yep. There's not going to be any <laughs> spit or nothing in it. Ugh. I know. I know. You never know. But really, you never know, even from um, establishments that are looked at as high end, mm-hmm. you really never know because just because it's high end doesn't mean that there's high end people nope. working in the kitchen. No, nope. there have been many times when I've gone to film at a restaurant and they won't let me in the back because mm. they're like, I don't think we would pass code or whatever, oh you know, the board God. of health. And I'm like, whoa, okay. <laughs> okay. Let's, let's talk about that. That's an interesting <laughs> uh, take. So uh, obviously, you 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 do content, and you've done content for several businesses in Lafayette area, and one of them, in fact, um, Lola, uh, Cafe Lola. Mm-hmm. I I was doing some work for the owner there, and he was asking me like, "Hey, I'm really trying to get the word out," mm-hmm. and he's like, "Do you know anybody who does like something similar to kind of what you're doing with videos and all that that can help me get the word out?" I said, "Look, this was like maybe a year ago or so." Mm-hmm. Uh, I said. There is somebody on TikTok who does food videos. Her name's Tori Lemoyne. <laughs> I said, you might want to check her out. Now, I, she might charge. I don't know. But reach out to her. And I gave him, uh, I believe I gave him your link. Mm-hmm. And um, not long after that, I saw you created a yeah. video. I'm like, Yeah, I appreciate right. that. Yeah, that was fun. And that Kevin, he was so sweet. Yeah, Kevin, yeah. And I told him, I tell them all, if they ask me to come, like, I won't post it if I don't like it. Like, I cannot lie to people, <clears> you know. <throat> but I truly liked his rush. I had never been. So um, never been I had Ke- never been. Um, right. It's kind of on the far end yeah, for me. Is. So, yeah. um, But since then, I mean, I've been back. It's really good. So, I know I don't charge those small businesses. Um, I'm kind of like, you know, in that, like you said kind of in that weird uh feel bad about it they're trying to get their name out there yeah, they're trying yeah. to get exposure so to me that's a different whole different story but um yeah i really loved cafe lola still that's do. awesome yeah so whenever he opened up the second location i surely did charge him to <laughs> post about the the opening of that location because that's how i make revenue of course yeah and he course. makes revenue selling food i wouldn't go into his business saying hey i'm here i want to eat yeah I'm expecting to get some food for free. I, d- yeah. I don't want to do that. Of course. And I didn't expect, I don't think he expected to get something for free for us, but I did do some stuff for free for him. Uh, it was also sponsored with uh, one of our sponsors, Cox, Biz- Cox Business. It was like a little uh, interview with him, and I did some, some B roll footage. Uh, I did everything I could to offer him as much of the content that I had available that I could produce without feeling like I was overloading my followers with just yeah. the same content. Mm-hmm. So, I guess in that vein, like, how do you maintain your your follower base? And, like, what do, do they expect a certain thing from you? Or, like, do you read the comments and kind of feel like a vibe? Or do you just create whatever you want? I try. I mean, I do create whatever I want. And I think that's one of my faults is that I'm very inconsistent. You know, there's um, wonderful creators on TikTok who – it's the same thing every time they yeah. post and they have millions of followers. Um, and they say that's, you know, the key to success on Consistency, TikTok. Consistency, yeah. But I'm also like a real person. Like I want to just show like how I'm feeling that day or if I'm angry at something or, you know, if I'm doing something totally out of my niche, I want to share that because I'm human. So I guess maybe that's why I haven't blown up, you know. Um, I think some people will probably unfollow me for some of those videos if it's not food related or Louisiana related. And they're like, eh, like, okay. but <laughs> yeah, people that unfollow for that type of reason is so lame. It's so yeah. lame. It really is. Um, you started creating videos, uh, TikTok tips with Tori. Yeah. And I was like, it's a little different for her, it but was. I mean, you do social media management. Mm-hmm. So um, I didn't know that at the time, but now knowing that it makes sense that you would offer tips because you're trying to also help other people and maybe potentially a business that's trying to navigate TikTok yeah. into things that may work better. Right. So it's more for creators because I had just so many friends like asking me like, and we all kind of work together. Like, you know, what'd you do in this case? Or, you know, how do I create a media kit or how much do I charge? Or how do I do this? How do I edit this? What equipment do I use? So like we were always asking each other questions and it was just like on my mind, I should create a series of the things that I've learned along the way that I don't want people to make mistakes doing, you know, I mean, there's some things that I've done and I'm like, Oh God, if I could go back, I would not work. (laughs) 
work with that brand again or whatever, you know? Um, so I said, let me just start a series and I'm still learning, but I'll just share what I'm learning too, as we go yeah. kind of to help other creators out too. So that's why I, um, introduced that series. No, it's good. <laughs> I, I love that you did that. Um, so we had a, another comment from Kim Turnley <laughs> and I put up the comment on the screen, but I think it, it like truncated it. So I'm gonna read it. Tori has brought a totally new vibe to my business page. My clients love her content. It's always fun and colorful and catches their attention as well as giving them great information to use with their pets. Aww. She has made my life so much easier. <laughs> Extremely grateful for all that she does. Oh, so sweet. <laughs> all right. Great comment there. <laughs> um, so being, um, I, I would say, or I, I'm going to let you, Tell me if you would say this. Do you feel as if, and you can you can humbly brag if you want to. That's up to you. Um, do you feel as if you're considered TikTok famous yet? No, I okay. don't. Okay. And people will say that you're TikTok famous, or it's always the kids that my at my son's school. They're like, "Your mom's TikTok famous," and I'm like, "No, it's not." It, it, it maybe in the beginning, I think since it's so flooded now, honestly, TikTok, you know, so mm -hmm. when I had like 50,000, I felt like I had a lot. Yeah. Now I have 88 and it's just grown so much that I feel like that's really not a lot. I don't know. It's just, it's just me. How, where would, what, at what point would you feel <laughs> TikTok famous? I have no, maybe a million followers. I don't know. Is it the follower count that would make you feel that? Maybe, but then again, I look at some of my friends who have over a million and I'm like, they're just a, a regular, people, regular yeah. person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't think any, I really don't think any creator, if you're not surely famous, like a celebrity, it's not famous. It's not but like, have you, famous. Have you ever been starstruck from <laughs> like someone you've seen on TV or you've seen this, this person on social media, maybe they you know, they come to town and you see them, but they're not like a celebrity per se. I've never, I've, no, I have okay. one of my friends, Brittany Camille. Okay. I met with her for lunch. She's got like almost 2 million followers. And I just feel like, I guess, cause we're from the same area. Like we're all Louisiana creators. I just feel like they're just another like person that, you know, a friend. Um, I don't get that. I don't get that vibe. Like you'd have to be like a real celebrity for me to be like starstruck. Okay. I think. Okay. That's interesting. <laughs> You know, I, I guess I get that. Um, my wife, and I don't know if she's listening, but she gets starstruck easy, but she doesn't have any sort of, like, reason to want to be famous at all. Like, she, she she's content with not being famous. Yeah. Like, she doesn't try to grow. She doesn't do yeah. any content, like, growing on social media or anything like that. So, like, for example, Rob Perillo, whenever I had Rob Perillo in on my podcast uh, about a year ago or so, she was so excited that I had him on. And I was excited, too. Yeah, I've never met Rob Perillo. I've always been told how tall he is. Joking there, buddy. He is short. <laughs> and to have him come in, it was so cool because, like, I could hear his voice yeah. in person. But it sounded like I was watching TV, right, like watching right. the news yeah. or the weather. And I was like, it was really cool to have him in. But I don't want to and – I, and I say this not to – not to brag or anything like that, but I I, I almost want to say that I've been desensitized to a degree yeah. of what famous people are like being starstruck is. I still get excited when I see someone that I've seen either on social media or on TV locally that I have not seen in person. So like when you walked in, I was like, oh, that's actually her. That's cool. Yeah. And then when Rob Arillo came in, I was excited. And, like, Marcel Fontenot and all these big anchors on the news, it gets, it's exciting because you've seen them, especially the old-timer – I say old-timer. That sounds so <laughs> terrible. The the veterans of yeah. news, whenever I interview them, it's so cool because I remember watching them as a kid. Mm -hmm. That's to cool. me, I was – there was a degree of starstruck there because I remember being a kid thinking that they are famous. They're yeah. on TV. yeah. But knowing now the perspective of it, that I have of what's considered famous and the celebrity status, they're they're technically local celebrities. But like the status, like if I was to meet meet Johnny Depp, I don't know what I would do. Lose it. Like I'd be right. like, oh my god, that's yeah. that's Edward Scissorhands. Yes. Like that's so cool. <laughs> and like I'd be shaking. I'd yeah. be so nervous. But yeah. like I've been desensitized locally to know that I'm also by some people considered a famous person locally right. 
and I don't consider myself that. See, yeah. I, I and like people, I'll, I'll react to people's uh, Facebook posts, like whether it be a real estate agent or a business, and they'll screenshot that I reacted to their stuff and say, "Oh my God, I'm yeah. I'm famous now." I'm like, "Yeah, oh my God, no, You're just the I didn't realize that that would." <laughs> yeah. But you know, I I'm it, I'm grateful that they feel that way. It's yeah, cool. It's sweet. It's but I. Don't look at myself as famous because I'm not trying to be famous. I started this to let people know what was being built. And it just so happens that everybody was wondering who was running the page. And now that my face is out there to some degree, like not everybody watches the podcast. so They may not ever see my face because I don't like putting my face out there. Like I'd rather just not. (laughs) And but when people realize who I am, like especially in public, I've had people approach me and like, hey, you're that guy. I'm like. (sighs) <sighs> and usually I'm wearing my shirt that has my logo on. I'm like, yep, yeah, that's, that's me. That's me. <laughs> and then, you know, I'll have a conversation with them. And I, I, like I said, I don't consider myself famous. So I'm like, I try to be, I, I try to be as human as possible. Like yeah. I, I just want to let them know that I'm a normal person. Yeah, exactly. So it, so have you had, obviously you've had, you mentioned an example. How often do you get recognized in the, in the area? Um, I mean, I guess Do you even put yourself in a position to get recognized. Yeah, I don't really go out and about and like <laughs> okay. stroll around the streets, but um, sometimes, yeah. Okay. Like um, one time, I was filming for one of the businesses, and I asked one of the members to kind of do something for me, and they're like, "Wait, you're that girl that's on TikTok and takes the boat to the restaurants." I'm like, "Yes." Oh, the boat to the restaurant. Yeah. That's so true. I'm like, yeah. "Yeah, do you mind like helping me film here or whatever?" And then I was at Rouse's not too long ago, and one of my followers like came running or her husband came running up to me and was like you're that famous girl my wife loves to watch you and I'm like huh I'm not the famous girl like who's that who are you talking That's about so cool yeah but, uh, they're super sweet and then you yeah. know you just take a picture with them and but it's like weird because you're not famous like you're just posting stuff on the internet and you just happen to have more followers than some mm-hmm. I don't know it's strange know. <laughs> it's it's a it's a weird feeling to be recognized in public it is and I have a friend that I eat, that I eat lunch with um every week and it's not often but like the times that people do recognize me they come straight to my table and they start talking to me and I've never met this person I've had like UPS drivers FedEx drivers I've had (laughs) people that work in shops and this and that uh you know teachers come up and like hey you know you're that guy and I I follow your page and I love what you do and a lot of people just want to express that they are thankful that I do what I do. Yeah. And I'm, I'm like, great. They, they said they love the new restaurants. I'm like, that's why I do it. Right. Because I love the new restaurants too. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's, it is a weird weird thing to have a friend who's not social media famous, in, in if you want to call it that, at all. Mm-hmm. And he's always like, he, he asked me one day, he's like, does that ever get like weird? Like, do, like, like does it, is it strange to you? And I'm like, he's like, how often does that happen? I'm like, I mean, it only happens usually whenever I'm with you. Yeah. It's so weird. But uh, yeah. um, I was actually with lunch. I was actually uh, um, at lunch with him one time at uh, Taco Sisters. Okay. Are you familiar with Taco mm-hmm. Sisters? Okay. Yep. It was a. Uh, it was just a random day. It was probably about two o'clock in the afternoon, one thirty, two o'clock in the afternoon, because sometimes we would eat lunch late. And I, w- I had my back to the door to the lobby, and my friend said, "Hey." That's Lauren Daigle. I'm like, <gasps> yeah. And I turn around, and this was kind of like still in that COVID era, so you had uh-huh. a mask on, oh. but it, you could tell like the way yeah. she was dressed, very oh, yeah. kind of hipster Just, vibe. Yes. I was like, that's her. Yeah. Oh my god. And I wanted so bad, so bad to go up to her and get a picture with her, but I didn't. You should have. Uh, but I she didn't. She seems like she would have been all for it. I think she She's... would have, and she was with like a, what looked like a, a mother figure or like maybe an aunt, mm-hmm. and she had like a small child, I guess maybe a, a you know a nef- a niece or a nephew, and at that moment I, I, that I'm that I thought I want to go get a picture with her, I thought to myself, she probably gets that all the time. All the time, yeah. And what if I go up to her? And uh, Lauren, I know you're probably never going to see this podcast episode, <laughs> but if you do, um, I don't think you'd ever be rude. But like in the back of my mind, I thought, what if she's not having a good day? Yeah. And I was like, I you know, know what? Ah, I don't want to be that guy. But in Lafayette, I think she would have been fine with it. I know. You should have. I, I know. I should have. You know, now that now that, that that event happened, I thought to myself, I should have just done it. Like yeah. I should have seized the moment because yeah. it was so cool that she was 
out and about almost almost raw dogging public. Yeah. Like she was just there there was no entourage. There was no bodyguards. I don't know if she would ever have that, right. but like she was just there. Yeah. I'm like, that's yeah. That's so strange. Like I figured <laughs> she'd have like somebody watching with her, like like a like a big guy like yeah. there to protect her. But no, she was just casually there and I'm like yeah that doesn't surprise me with her at all like she just seems so chill and yeah, just yeah. I actually saw her before she was ever famous I saw oh. her in church uh singing oh what church is it family uh, life something or no, no um my friend actually took me there it's my friend's church um our saviors okay so she's like hey come on they're doing like a whatever event or whatever and I was like okay I guess so like I went and a a few people sang that night, and when we left, I was like, that one girl that sounds like, I, I don't feel bad for saying it, Miley Cyrus, because she has that raspy yeah, voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, that girl, I don't know how she's not famous. And then, like, soon after that, she was like, she blew up. She was also considered the uh, local Adele. Okay. Had that, like, yeah. deep, mm -hmm. sultry voice. Yeah. And uh, so the friend that I go to lunch with, he actually is part of the church that she attended on a okay. regular basis and kind of got her start. Uh, my friend's wife and her would sing on the same stage. And I guess Pats took her to some crazy heights. Like she is at yeah. celebrity status. Yeah. Like, she's, yeah. I mean, she's insanely talented. So she is. Yeah. 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 But yeah, that's, that's my starstruck moments <laughs> and kind of my perspective on um, that. Um, but yeah, we're at about, 50 minutes and I am getting hungry, but, um, <laughs> I really enjoyed the conversation. Um, what are you, I guess, it, as far as future goes and with your TikTok uh, journey, where do you hope to see yourself in the next, I don't know, TikTok changes so much in the I next know. year or two? I know. I just want to keep creating content that I enjoy and I know other people will enjoy. Um, I don't have any huge plans or anything. I just want to keep it <coughs> kind of, you know, the same how how I enjoy doing it. I don't want to be anything other than myself. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. Last last question. And then that'll be it. Um, what is your take on the the whole thing about the possible TikTok ban. I mean, that's been a, in talks a couple of times, but um, is that something that you fear, like you would be upset with? Obviously, you'd probably be upset with it, but like you make money with it now. So yeah. it's like, what are your thoughts about a possible TikTok ban? I think they threaten it a lot. I don't think it'll ever happen. <laughs> I know that TikTok is super um, strict on whatever they're trying. I don't know. They're going to come to a settlement at some point because we creator, we're what makes them run, right? right? right. If they don't have us, they don't have a platform. So I think they'll come to some agreement. I don't think it'll ever get banned. I think they just kind of have to butt heads a little bit um, until they figure something out. But even if it would happen, there's other platforms. There will always be another one, you know, as yeah. long as I can keep yeah. creating content and make videos somewhere, I'm good. So what happens if it does get banned and there's not a new network per se at that moment? Obviously, an, a new one will pop up. Something will gra be gravitated towards. But uh, would you go back to Facebook or Instagram? I'll never go back to Facebook. Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> I'll go back to Instagram, which when all this talk happens, I always mm -hmm. say, hey, go follow me on Instagram in case it gets banned. But uh, I'll never go back to Facebook. I'm sorry. Facebook? <laughs> what What about Facebook, bro? It's the retirement home oh of my platforms. God. Look, I can't disagree <laughs> at all, but it is still one of the most dominant social media networks. It is. It is. I mean, truly, I have to admit that everyone has Facebook. Not everyone has Instagram. Not everyone has TikTok. Pretty much everybody has everybody Facebook. Everybody has Facebook. And I'll tell you why. It's because you mentioned it, the retirement home of the social media <laughs> networks. You got to keep up with Mimi and Lily and the grandmas and the grandpas. And, you know, um, it's, it's kind of your also photos. Like there's a lot of old photos on there, like especially from the early days of Facebook where mm -hmm. people were doing the duck face still. <laughs> and, um, you know, some people use it as kind of like a memory, uh, especially the memories. Oh my God, my son, every time a memory pops up, I'm like, Oh, know, he's so huh? little, so little, but, um, yeah, I, I think Facebook is still here to stay. It's going to oh, be yeah. around for a while. It's, uh, it's a monster. And, um, 
But yeah, I, I look forward to continuing to see your progression of your TikTok videos and your, your creativity. And I look forward to hopefully seeing more McDonald's paid <laughs> content. <laughs> no more McDonald's. I've learned my lesson there. I'll have, uh, to, I'll have to hide that video from you if ever do no, another one. No, 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 no. It, I think it's great. I think it's great. Uh, kudos to being paid from McDonald's instead of paying them. Um, well, with that, Tori, I'm uh, excited to have, have you on. And um, I look forward to, again, continuing to follow and seeing where you go. Yeah, thanks for having me and enjoy that good Mac. I will, I will. And so let everybody know if they want to follow you, where they can do that at and what they have to look up. So on TikTok, my um, name is just Tori Lemoyne, T-O-R-Y-L-E-M-O-I-N-E. And on Instagram, it's TikTok Tori Lemoyne. All right. Well, there you go, guys. Uh, Tori, have a great weekend. And um, again, I, I appreciate you coming on. Thank you so much. All right. <laughs>